One of the things that I really love about tiny houses is that they're often packed full of the character of the people that live in them. And that's really the case with this next place we're about to visit. I guess you could say it's a real gypsy dream. Hi, Frenchie. Hey, how's it going? So <laughs> lovely to see you. You too, welcome. This wagon is absolutely adorable. Thanks. <laughs> what was your inspiration behind creating something like this? I worked at fairy festivals in the UK and um, I was inspired by the Gypsy Vado, the traditional bow top gypsy uh, wagons that I saw at those events um, and I just wanted to live in a caravan and they were really expensive here, the plastic white awful things, so I just decided to build my own. It is just absolutely packed with character isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of like me. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it actually made from? Um, so it is kind of like based on a traditional bow top um, with the canvas. Um, but it's a bit away from the traditional sense because it's got a MIG welded steel frame as the as the interior. Right. So I built the steel frame onto the um, trailer and then it's got plywood on the outside and it's 25 mil box section through the middle. Um, so in between the box section, there's 25 mil polystyrene and then ply on the inside. So it's fully insulated all through the walls. So this wagon's really one that's designed to be moved around, isn't it? The whole thing weighs a ton and a half with all my stuff in it. So right, that's good. Um, you need a decent sized truck to pull it, but it is pullable. And what about the windows here? What are these made from? It's just like tent windows. Right. Um, so it's made from vinyl, um, but they've got zips on them. Uh, so you can unzip them to let the air in or you can zip them all the way off in the summer. And I've also got, um, they made me fly screens that value Velcro to the inside, so in the summer I tend to just have the fly screens on the window and the, the breeze comes in and out all summer. I really love all of the artwork on this caravan as well, it's just so pretty. Yeah, the whole caravan really has been a work of art. I'm really, really blessed to have lots of amazing friends in my life that are really talented at, at creating things. So, you know, Dave with the beautiful fire, which we'll look at later. And yeah, there's heaps of art in here that my, my friends have, have given their time and energy to and it's just beautiful. Yeah. But also your own talents as well, because you actually built a lot of this yourself, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I built most of it myself, made a lot of expensive mistakes along the way, but learned a lot. Now, just before we go inside, I would love to know a little bit about this place where we are, because this looks incredible here. Yeah, it's great. It's a communal space. We have big communal gardens. There's chickens behind us that produce eggs. Um, there's giant organic veggie gardens. There's pizza ovens. There's glowworms and a river. We can swim in the river in the summer. Wow. Um, it's set on about um, nine or ten acres, I think. I'm not totally sure of the size. Um, yeah, and in the big house, people live communally, and they all they all eat in the evenings together. Together. Um, just a, a really, I mean we're so close to the city here, but really far away. There's no phone reception here. Um, in my caravan I get no internet connection at all. It's really good. It's really like, you know, completely off the grid and out of, out of the connectivity, which is great. I just choose when I want to go and connect myself onto the computer. So, Perfect. Yeah. Well, this caravan is absolutely gorgeous from the outside. I can't Thanks. wait to see what it's like on the inside. Yeah, let's go. Come in. Look at the artwork <laughs> on that door. First thing you notice, eh? It really is. That is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so this, again, it was my friend Ruben. I feel like he's such a magic person that he brought a lot of stuff into my life. So these are kind of like protection symbols. These are, these are my protection people um, all the way down here. And they just started appearing. They weren't there in the beginning. And this dragon, he's extremely fluffy and he's a protector. And when this dragon just appeared one day, uh, a, a little while after that, my partner appeared in my life and my partner's really fluffy. And uh, <laughs> he, the dragon reminds me of him. So it's kind of like Ruben called my partner Jules into my life. And how do you think your uh, partner feels about being likened to a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's into it, eh? He, he, he embraces the fact that he's fluffy. So. <laughs> Dragons are pretty cool. Let's have a look on the inside. Yeah, after you. Oh, this is 
absolutely magical. Walking in here, it's just like being greeted by a work of art. Yeah, all, all my friends have just made so many beautiful pieces of art here, right? And how wonderful that you can have all of those contributions from your friends to actually form the space where you live. Yeah. And this kitchen space looks absolutely <laughs> lovely. Thanks, yeah, it's, uh, it's Mark III. I like it looking a little bit character, character-esque and a little bit wobbly. I think one of my favorite bits is this cupboard because it's a yin-yang, yin-yang here, and it's a double folding door. So oh, great. You can get underneath the sink here. Uh, you can pull it all the way back. Um, and I wasn't sure this was gonna work. Hey, it was a bit of an experiment and like, oh, is it actually gonna work? But it, it totally did. And where does your water come from here? Uh, so I've got a container outside. Uh, so I, I shower in the house here as well. I don't have a shower in here, obviously. So I just take water from the house and I've got a container that's um, undercover outside. And so that feeds up through the floor into the, um, it's like a galley style foot pump like for a boat right um, and then it feeds up into the sink and then i've just got a outlet that comes down and underneath the caravan um and i just move that around because i don't use a lot of water in here so sure. the trees are quite happy to kind of get a little bit of a, a water every now and again and i only use uh, natural natural products for cleaning and stuff so there's nothing there's nothing bad going into the environment and being british i'm really into my tea so tea shells are really important so this is all tea this is all tea, mostly. Of course, um, how could you leave that out? <laughs> yeah, and my partner's a, uh, training as a joiner at the moment, so uh, he made me this beautiful tea tea tray. Oh, um, gorgeous. Yeah, I really love it. Eh? That's He's lovely. Such a sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've been in this house for a few minutes, <laughs> and it seems like almost every single item that you point out has some connection to people in your life and friendships, and that's just... Wow, it just makes that space so special, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really does. I'm really blessed to have so many amazing people yeah. in my life. Yeah, you really get by with a little help from your friends, eh? So true. <laughs> and your living space here, this just looks so comfortable and cosy. Yeah, so um, originally here I had a blanket box, which was probably only about this big. Um, and it just wasn't comfortable for sitting on. I mean, you could perch on it, and but you couldn't really lounge on it, you know? This is a lounge space, so mm. uh, I made the, this much bigger when I custom built it to put in there. Um, and also, it means that you can sit on it and I can play guitar on it, I do my meditation on it, you can have two or three people lounging around on here really comfortably. Um, and also, underneath here is all my clothes. Um, so this lifts up. And, and that's it, hey, so I've got my skirts and my dresses and my trousers and my, and my tops. So it's just really, really organized and easy to access. But the thing that really makes a difference in here is the fire. Um, so Dave, who helped me with the project initially, he also built the heart of the project, um, which is this beautiful fire here. I really love how you said that because a fire really does become the heart of a project, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. And Dave made heaps of effort and made me a really special fire. Hey, We had a glass blower lived here, um, Owen, and he made the dampers um, from glass. So they've got like vortex marbles on them. Wow. And I'm a chakra dance instructor. So um, down the side of the fire, there's seven marbles um, that are the color of the chakras. Um, and then on the other side, Dave welded a koru into the, into the um, side of the fire. And then there's a clear marble on the other side so that when the fire is lit, you see the firelight coming through from both sides as well wow. as from the front. So it's amazing, hey, it's such a, such a beautiful design. and. Yeah, he put heaps of effort into it, it was really nice. The floor's quite lovely in here as well, isn't it? This was actually a steel. Um, kind of don't want to tell people because it looks so real, eh? But it's actually not really wood. Um, it's a lino and it totally keeps the weight down because it's just, it's really super lightweight. And I contacted a flooring company and they said, how big, how big, uh, how big a piece do you need? And I was like, oh, four and a half meters by just over two meters. And they were like, Oh, we'll just send you an off cut, like 30 bucks. <laughs> I was like, no. awesome, because this flooring is normally really expensive, hey, but it actually looks like wood, doesn't it? It's, it really it's amazing. does. And the cat seems to have uh, found the most comfortable space. I've always wanted a cat, but I had to wait till I was not on the road so much, hey, but um, I got, the cat kind of chose me. She came from the SPCA and she came from 
you know, a little a little box room with heaps of other cats to cat paradise, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, it's kind of human paradise, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's the queen. She's, you know. And I've also, uh, in the kitchen here, I've got a little cat door underneath the underneath the shelves um, so she can get in and out and it's just kind of out the way and she spends a lot of time sitting under the shelves looking out of the window it's like cat tv now the bed area just looks so cozy <laughs> yeah the bed was important uh, the bed was really important I, I like my sleep and i like my relaxation and behind the headboard there's actually um there's a little cupboard that you can lift the lid the lid off it and you can store stuff down the back and there's actually quite a lot of space down there um, to just store random things that you need out of the way. Uh, extra storage is always good in a small space. And speaking of extra storage, you've also got quite a bit underneath the bed, don't you? Yeah, because it's a queen size bed and it's quite high up, I've got heaps of storage under there, hey? So I've got my tools under there, I've got all my blankets, I've got my towels, um, I've got, you know, just everything really, everything that I don't need in this space is stored under there. Now I know that you've got access to the house for when you need to shower and stuff, mm -hmm. but do you have a toilet in here? I do. It's a little bit sneaky, actually. Um, so I obviously have access to the house for the toilet as well. And across from my caravan, there's a compost toilet. Um, but sometimes in the night when it's really cold and it's raining hard out, you just really don't want to go outside to go to the toilet. Hey, So um, I built a little sneaky toilet and it's just here. It's just a cartridge toilet. So I built it actually into here. It's just um, it's got a sealable lid. And when you go to empty it in the morning, you just literally lift the bucket out of here, take it outside, pour it on a lemon tree. Trees love this stuff. And uh, yeah, just give it a wash and then stick it back in for the next night. And um, it's super useful, hey, just real simple. Yeah, another thing that has happened kind of as I've lived in here and as I've been using the space is that a lot of the stuff has appeared kind of organically. Like, you know, this was actually originally a tea shelf, so it's not being used as one at the moment. But a lot of time, um, especially in the winter, I'll sit here and I'll get the fire going, but I want to still be able to see outside of my caravan. So I'll be sitting reading a book and I was like drinking tea and being like, what do I, I need to put... I'm going to build a shelf. So I just built a shelf here for my cup of tea. <laughs> so, that's great. And then, yeah, I have a lot of random trinkets. So these shelves kind of came in as, as I was going along. Um, and the altars as well. I put the altar in, um, you know, just a place to hold my crystals and, and, and have a focus for the week or for the month or for that day. Um, and I find that's really important for my own uh, spiritual practice. One of the benefits, I suppose, of a project actually taking three years is that you get to really get to know the space and understand what your needs are in it. Yeah, totally. And it, it's definitely been an organic process. And my original design, I mean, the main stuff is still in the same place, but everything else has changed. You know, the idea that the ideas that I had in my head in the beginning, when you actually realistically start living in a space, they tend to shift around quite a lot. Um, but it's been beautiful, you know, I've just kind of done it around work and done it around festivals and projects and being on the road and, you know, just kind of fit it in with my life and done little bits here and there as I could. And so your partner as well, he's actually building his own caravan, isn't he? Yeah, that, it's funny. That's actually how we met. We met online over our mutual love for tiny builds. Um, and we met up for coffee and we just geeked out for hours, hey. And we were we were actually friends for a very long time, just with quite similar interests of building stuff and wanting to go on adventures. Um, but yeah, we ended up, it ended up being more than a friendship. And he ended up moving here and finishes, finishing his build on the land. Um, and yeah, so we lived together, but we had separate houses, um, which for me and for Jules as well is absolutely perfect because we're both really independent people. We've both got a lot going on in our lives and it meant we could have two, three days a week where we were together and then the rest of the time we were off doing our own thing. And we just, we didn't have to ever compromise on our experience. You know, this is my space, my decoration, my rules. His is his space, his decoration, how he wants to do it. And it's quite funny as well because you look at this caravan, I've pretty much built me in a caravan, you know? It's curvy, it's blank. There's like hippie tat everywhere, chakra stuff, you know, glitter, like it's totally just me in a caravan. And then you look at Jules's build and his is very square, practical, precise, full of wood, like just, you know, very manly and, and, and very much like him. Like he's totally a very grounded kind of, um, you know, natural person. Um, so it's, it's really cool. And it's just a good way to live. Um, 
you know, we, we have a really amazing relationship. Everything in here is packed with so much character and it's so customised. <laughs> this could not have been a cheap thing to accomplish. Um, it, it's actually quite surprising. It wasn't, it wasn't too much money. Um, it cost 12 and a half grand all in, and that includes the tools and a few expensive mistakes. <laughs> 12 and a half grand. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is an amazing achievement for that budget. <laughs> and I've got some really sexy tools now, hey? I've got an AEG set that is... It's very nice. <laughs> right. Wow. So, so not counting the tools, in the purchase, what do you think the actual cost of the caravan was? Uh, I think maybe I spent about two grand on tools, so just over ten grand on the caravan. Um, it's a much cheaper way to live. You can't have a lot of stuff because you don't have a lot of space. Um, it just frees up all that time where you're working in a full-time job paying for a mortgage. It frees up that time for you to be, you know, I, I travel to festivals, I get creative, I'm involved in a charitable trust that me and a few friends set up ourselves. Um, I run social circus projects. I do heaps of meditation and yoga. I play my guitar. I go mountain biking. I spend time with my cat. I hang out with my friends. Um, I potter in the garden. You know, just all of that life stuff that's so beautiful. And, and so amazing. I get to do heaps more of that and I, you know, get involved in organising events and it's it's just a really beautiful way to live. I can I can pretty much get away with working a couple of hours a week, teaching two classes a week. I can just about live off. Um, so that's like, well, three hours worth of work. Um, so, you know, that's really living the dream. Hey? People are like, oh, you're so lucky. And I do really feel that I'm very blessed in this life and I am lucky but I also feel that you make your own luck and if you put the hard yards in and you hustle all the time um, you know and you do the things that you love and then life's beautiful and amazing and you've just got to follow your own dreams. Hey? Well Frenchie I have to say it is a really wonderful home congratulations on the build <laughs> and thank you so much for showing me around. No worries yeah my pleasure thanks for coming. <laughs> I have fast fallen in love with this gypsy wagon. It's a warm, welcoming, beautiful space to live in. But more than that, it's just Frenchy. Everything in this space has some kind of significance to her and her life, and that is what truly makes this place a home. More than that though, it's what it represents to her, which is the ability to live a free and artistic life. Who could ask for more?